Our rules are simple, but the challenge is great. No shoulder pets, tames that can be carried, or typical boss dinos allowed. That means no Rexus, Therizinos, or any other dinos people normally use in these fights. Equipped with official server cap saddles, our 19 contenders will be backed by the commanding presence of a loyal Uteranus providing that extra boost. All competitors will go into battle with food to provide a healing effect. Herbivores will have plenty of sweet veggie cakes, and carnivores and omnivores will have cooked meat. It's important to note that the tames in this series aren't typically used during boss battles because of the amount of mutations you need to make them competitive. But all the dinos competing will have around 23,000 health and 1200% melee. This will give them all a fair shot at defeating one of the guardians. It won't always be feasible to reach these stats depending on the dinos I'm using, but I'll let you know the amount of mutations and levels it took in order to reach it. All competitors start out with 50 base health and melee and 40 points and everything else before I apply mutations and experience levels. You can decide on your own servers if the juice is worth the squeeze. Competitors are required to fight the Megapithecus, Broodmother, then Dragon on all difficulties starting with Gamma, then Beta, finishing with Alpha. Their success will be annotated on this scorecard with a pass or fail system. Clearing all the bosses earns them a gold boom medal. Silver is awarded for clearing Beta, Bronze is for clearing Gamma, and the Chunk of Poop is for an unworthy performance. Once all vanilla island creatures are finished, the gold medal winners will test their strength against the Overseer for the finale. Now let's introduce our competitor and see if they have what it takes. Parasaur. This is often the first creature most new players see, and it's sometimes their first rideable tame. The Parasaur has limited combat utility, but a very useful secondary ability that detects enemies almost like a radar. The stats required for this competition were achieved with 65 mutations and 79 experience levels. 40 mutations and 50 levels went into health, and 25 mutations and 29 levels went into melee. Now let's see if they have what it takes. The green portal is open and the underparas are, well, let's be honest, they're parasaurs. And unfortunately, they demonstrate it and remind us that they are, in fact, bottom of the food chain. These guys struggle big time with the whistle commands while in a big group, and not only do they struggle to land shots, half the time they don't even try. There were too many times during these fights where the parasaur would just stand there getting hit and wouldn't do anything. Veggie cakes would have their work cut out for them, and the parasaurs are able to beat the Gamma Megapithecus and earn a pass. The Gamma Broodmother is up next, and I'll be honest, I didn't have much confidence. It really is mind-blowing how beneficial the veggie cakes are for herbivores. It makes me really wish that carnivores had a better healing alternative. You could argue that they don't need it because of their damage output, but then I'd say Therizinos are up there with being one of the best, and they get veggie cakes. Maybe just give them some cooked prime or some mutton to heal for a bunch, and it'll give a similar cooldown before they can eat it again, just like the veggie cakes. And well, the veggie cakes are strong enough to allow the Parasaurs to get the upper hand on the Gamma Broodmother, and they earn their second pass. The Gamma Dragon would probably cause some problems if these guys were any bigger, and he kind of still does since they seem to not understand Wessel commands. They struggle with landing shots too, which I truly hope wouldn't be a problem in this fight considering how high off the ground their attack is compared to some of our other creatures that couldn't land shots. If RNG goes our way, then shoot, maybe we could beat the Alpha Dragon with these guys, but I don't think it'd be possible to do with the official timeframes. Note that the count is no longer present at the top, and that's because my server's hosting my hardcore series on Scorched Earth. I have to record these offline and the timer doesn't exist outside of multiplayer servers. I am keeping track though, so don't worry. The underpairs are able to get it done and earn their third pass. Blue portal time means beta time, and the beta Megapithecus is up next. The Parasaur has no chance in hell to beat the beta bosses. Right? I mean, he's slow. Half of them don't even attack when in range, and the other half just stand there like fools, so... This should be impossible. Well, this is why you should eat your veggies, kids. One sweet veggie kick a day keeps guaranteed death away. The underparas go to work, and they're able to shut down the beta Megapithecus and earn a solid pass. The Beta Broodmother is up next, and yikes. So, her sister found out that I talked about her in the last episode, and she said, Hey, Beta Broods, let me tell you something. Keep that no good rascal out of my arena. So, that's what she did. She came at Commander Utes and I, the underpairs with her heart full of anger, and started laying down an ass whooping. The veggie cakes held their own for quite some time. It actually made this a pretty long fight. But it was evident when their effects couldn't keep up with the Beta Broodmother's pain train. She eventually started dropping pairs left and right, and then eliminated Commander Utes and I, handing the underpairs their first set of fails. The Beta Dragon is no walk in the park. You're dealing with increased movement speed, increased health, and a hell of a lot more damage. It all snowballs too, because the more health he has, the more often he has to take off, which means more damage that you have to take. The Parasaur never dreamed it would be a part of something so great. It was content sitting on the beach, horking down berries, and getting knocked unconscious by people like you. But no, not today, buckaroo. These underparas are engaged in a fully-fledged fight for their life, and they're losing. Why are they losing? Because you haven't signed up as a member or a patron yet. Okay, probably not. 
but you'd sure make me happy if you did that, sweet thing. Mwah. The Baited Dragon hands the underpair as a massive set of bales. Your eyes do not deceive you, my friend. That is a red portal, and that means alpha time, baby. The underpairs are in the snowy layer of the Alpha Megapithecus, and they're honestly out of their element. The Alpha Megapithecus moves so quickly, and it's damn near impossible for the underpairs to keep up, especially when their faces are covered in monkey poo. We lose a para due to a bug right off the bat, but no worries. He's got 18 brothers and sisters all hopped up on veggie delight. They have the Megapithecus bent over as they take him to Brown Town. It takes a while, and the majority of the para posse is defeated, but they do it. They cap the night off with a victory over the Alpha Megapithecus and earn a pass. <laughs> Heading over to the scoreboard, the underpairs earn a bronze boom medal. There's a few changes to the rankings as I had to downgrade the Carno and the Arthropleuro to shit because they never cleared Gamma. If you haven't had an opportunity, please check out my Hard Porno Flyer series on Scorched Earth. It's been a ton of fun and I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.